So hello everybody. Uh, we are going to present you this uh, this use case on uh, graph theory about communities. First of all, a little word about uh, about us. So we come from a startup, a, um, a consultancy firm in uh, based in Paris that is called uh, Quantmetry. We are around uh, 40 data scientists, and uh, we have uh, several clients in different uh, in different business. And uh, we have projects uh, a little bit uh, uh, on uh, proof of concepts and also uh, up to the uh, production part of the, of the data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence uh, uh, projects. And uh, in particular, we, had, uh, we are having uh, a lot of different use cases uh, about fraud detection, predictive maintenance, consumer insights in marketing and, uh, and others. Uh, we are uh, during one project in fraud detection in particular we have to deal with uh, this community detection uh, problem that is quite interesting and there are uh, still uh, a lot of uh, uh, academic research also on this problem and uh, so we are going to present you a little bit about this first of all we are going to talk about graph theory so uh, what is a graph and the question could uh, really be reversed what is not a graph because uh, a graph is just uh, a set of elements uh, also called uh, nodes that are interconnected uh, by uh, links uh, or edges uh, and uh, so really about any system can be seen as a graph because uh, for any system we can just look at the basic uh, the components and how they are interconnected here we have just two examples but many more can be thought of so a social network where each node is is a person and uh, and the the links are just the, the interconnection between uh, between different uh, different people and a transportation network uh, and so it's clear that just looking at uh, the set of nodes or elements and their interconnections we can see a lot of uh, interesting uh, 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 characteristic of this system in this very uh, basic very uh, schematized uh, version of the of the of the problem and so uh, several different use cases can be defined on graph theory we are just uh, presenting some of them very shortly uh, the first one uh, well known finding the best route uh, on a graph and uh, we can th think about it as f using GPS, uh, GPS data, but also finding paths uh, on a social network for connecting different peoples. And this is a use case uh, uh, LinkedIn is uh, using a lot for, for finding the connection between uh, within uh, uh, people, spreading uh, dynamics. So uh, if we want to maximize a spreading uh, as in a viral cam marketing campaign or to minimize a spreading, as in a vaccination campaign. Uh, this is something we can study just looking at the graph structure of our system. Structure importance, uh, understanding uh, uh, the most important nodes and uh, the most famous example is uh, Google PageRank that is interested in finding the most uh, important pages so to, to propose uh, best, uh, best answer to our queries. And domino effects, uh, the what if scenario uh, that can help us uh, design more uh, stable and uh, more robust system uh, with uh, by taking into account the possible effect of uh, failures of some nodes or of uh, attacks to to some of the nodes of the of the system but we are going to present uh, another use case that is the community detection so uh, in this case, you can see the co-authorship network and it's very clear that the structure of this uh, graph is not at all random. You can see there are strongly connected part, we call them community. It's not very well defined as a mathematical concept, but, uh, uh, but it's, uh, really see to it's really easy to, to see them. And are these communities are uh, quite uh, are are not so much connected uh, between uh, between each other, and uh, one can ask a series of a series of questions about this problem. And one of them, for instance, is uh, where are the bridges? Uh, that is, there are some nodes that are uh, much more important because are the nodes uh, enabling the communication between different components of this graph. 
And so if we want to preserve the, stru the community structure of this, uh, of this network, for instance, we have to protect these nodes because are the ones enabling us to have a, 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 compl a, a, unique, a unique graph and not having uh, different separated components. Uh, if we want to build, uh, to build uh, such communities, there are two main approaches. So the first, uh, the first of them is a, a top-down approach. Uh, that is, we try and separate uh, the, mm, the, the, the different communities by cutting the bridges uh, connecting them. In this case, for instance, we are going to cut this link so to obtain two different groups of nodes that are going to be our communities. The other approach is kind of the other way around. That is, we are going to gather the most densely connected part of the, of the network. For instance, by having a random work on, uh, on our network and by studying the uh, time uh, a random working is spending on, uh, on each part of the, of the network. And so these two approaches uh, originate different uh, uh, algorithms uh, that, are, that can be used for solving this, uh, this problem. Um, if we think about the importance of a node, uh, in this case also we have uh, uh, two, uh, two ways of thinking about this problem. The first definition is a, a global importance. In this case the red node on the left hand side uh, it's the most important at a global level because it's the node that it's uh, uh, gathering the, the graph and uh, if we think about uh, removing this red node, uh, the graph is going to collapse into different components. And there are definitions that consider uh, the local importance. For instance, the number of links uh, a node has. And in this case, the red node is uh, quite far away from the other answer, and uh, it's the locally the most important because it's very well connected with uh, with the others. But from a global point of view, it's not that important. So the two answers are uh, really uh, telling us something different about the system. Other alternatives, well known, uh, for instance, Google PageRank algorithm that is uh, really aiming at, fi at uh, finding these uh, most important nodes in the network. Okay. So, um, we saw two important concepts in graph theory, so finding communities and nodes' importance. Okay, well, if tomorrow you're curious about a uh, graph and you want to analyze uh, your own uh, Facebook or Twitter graph, you want to know, okay, which tools can I use? So it depends on the amount of data you have. So if you are in a small data framework, you can use some nice uh, analytical libraries. So for instance, NetworkX, it's a pure Python library where you can do a lot of things, but not very performing. You can use a graph tool, so it's written in C++, so a little bit better, uh, but it can also be used uh, with Python. And uh, personally, I would recommend the iGraph library. It's written in C, and you can use it uh, both with a C library or uh, with Python or uh, even R. And uh, it's quite complete regarding uh, nodes importance measures and uh, community detection algorithm, because we just uh, presented the two main approaches, but there are actually plenty of algorithms that you can use. And uh, don't hesitate if you have questions, so we can um, go a little bit uh, further. OK, uh, if you are using Spark, there is also a Spark library, Graphics. Uh, it is quite limited regarding the number of algorithms that um, uh, are into, but you have the page rank, you have one uh, community detection algorithm, the label propagation, you have also some metrics like the number of triangles, the number of connected components uh, in your graph. So currently it's quite limited, but hopefully uh, in the future um, some new algorithm will be added. And finally, you might also uh, consider using a graph database. So Neo4j is kind of the current reference. Uh, and it's extremely good for uh, finding the shortest path and uh, uh, computing the degree of a node. Um, but it re really depends on the use case you have. For instance, if you just want to do some select, like select the nodes with uh, a given degree or with um, 
specific properties, it might not be the best option, but if you have really uh, finding the best route uh, use case, it's really something that you should consider. Okay, and now we have a small uh, demo time uh, using LinkedIn data and the iGraph library. So we will show you a bit um, how you can load some graph data, uh, make some summary statistics, uh, find communities, and compute a few uh, metrics that are uh, interesting to analyze the network. Okay. So first step, I load uh, my graph. So it's a LinkedIn network um, graph uh, of a person. You read it in a standard graph format. So here, uh, graph ML with the iGraph library. And then you can do some uh, summary statistics. So for instance, the number of nodes, the number of links, and the node attributes you have. Because in a, in a graph format, you have, of course, the nodes and the links, but you can also have a node and a links attributes. So for instance, the name of the person or uh, what all the additional information you can have. Sorry? Bigger, Bigger? okay. <laughs> Better? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Okay, so here I have some information about one node. So um, in this um, data, we have the headline of the person, its ID, uh, the country where this person comes from, its city and its industry. So basically the standard uh, LinkedIn profile information you have. You can do a nice plot. So this is a network, okay? So this is really a real network. So it seems to have a kind of structure, like something here, something here, and they could be like some groups and some uh, interesting things to find. The density, for instance, is an interesting metric. So the density is basically defined by the number of links you have in your graph among the number of possible links. So if uh, it every node is connected to uh, every node, it's just 100%, and here it's 7%. And as we mentioned, finding communities is finding the most densely connected subgroups. So fortunately, if you find a, a community, the density should increase from 7% uh, to, well, something larger than 7%. Uh, iGraph allows to, to compute uh, many um, centrality metrics, so node importance measures. So here we just computed the degree and the page rank, so the number of uh, direct neighbors uh, and the, the Google page rank. And in both cases, the, the, the node with the maximum uh, importance is actually a, a think tank. Um, why a think tank? Why does it make sense? Basically, uh, this think tank is connected to many other nodes in this graph. That's why it appears to be kind of important in this graph because it, it's, it is connected to many people, so many people need, to, um, need this node to exchange information. Now we want to do some uh, community detection and put nice colors uh, in this graph. So there are many algorithms that you can use. Uh, we used a walk trap, so it's based on a random walk, and it uses only the network structure. So it's not using the information that, okay, this person comes from uh, Frankfurt, this person is coming from Paris, or whatever. It's just the links um, that there are in this graph. But we could have several uh, approaches. Okay, so we run an, our algorithm and find some communities. So what can we see? First, it seems to make sense, kind of. Well, there is a group here, another here, another here. So it seems quite uh, OK. We can also see that some person seem to be bridges. OK, the colors are not great, but this person here uh, is a bridge between this community, this community, and this community. And if you cut this link and this link, well, these uh, communities cannot communicate uh, anymore. 
So now we want to analyze a bit uh, our communities because, of course, if you know what are the real communities, it's easy. You compare what you found uh, with what the reality is. But if you don't, well, you have to search for uh, metrics and search if these groups uh, make sense. So here we can look at the node attributes. So are these people coming from the same city? Are they um, having a similar job and so on? Here we first analyze the pink, just here, purple uh, group. And with the information we have. So industry, uh, country, city, and headline. OK, so uh, among these seven persons, well, most of them are coming from the financial sector. Most of them are German in Frankfurt. And uh, they, most of them are working currently at European Data Warehouse, so a society based in, in Frankfurt. So uh, without any prior knowledge of uh, these properties, our algorithm actually found a community of colleagues in a financial company in Frankfurt. Now, if we look at the red community, a bigger one, and make a subgraph, we can see the following thing. OK, so we have um, a community, um, but there is something a bit weird. Here, it's kind of more densely connected than here. So we wonder if it's really the good structure of if you still um, need to do to try some algorithm to find uh, subgroups. Just a remark, the density in this community is of 32%, so way larger than 7%. We just use our algorithm again and identifies two subgroups, the first one here and a second one here, and some isolated nodes. All algorithms have a limit, so we can uh, discuss that later. And if we analyze the blue one and uh, look at the headlines, actually, um, we just found the quantmetry group. And uh, all these persons are uh, all working at quantmetry. And this group is actually a group of uh, random recruiters and HR uh, on LinkedIn that are trying to <laughs> connect with the person from quantmetry. And if we zoom again on the quantmetry group, we now have a density of uh, 63%. So many, many, many links among the possible links are created. So that was just, yeah, that's it. So it was an introduction to graph theory and what you can do. Uh, OK, so it's funny to, to find communities, but of course, you must have a use case. And often, it can be for uh, fraud detection or HR analytics or uh, different things. So yeah, if you have any questions, we're quite happy to, to answer. So thanks, Aurelia and Alberto. So do you have any question about this? Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Really nice uh, demo, very impressive. I was wondering, um, let's say I need to process all of LinkedIn data. Can you speak a bit louder? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so uh, I, sup I suppose it's a subset of LinkedIn, what you showed us right now. It's a network of one person. Uh, in this case of me. So it's my complete LinkedIn network. All right. <laughs> so let's say I need to calculate like all of LinkedIn, LinkedIn data or like something really, really big. Can you explain like a strategy of how we can go from, you know, like CSV to, to this? From a CSV to this? So like uh, how can we use the usually LinkedIn API? So Is this your question? Usually um, data doesn't come as a connected graph. It comes as like rows in a file or like events or something like that. So yeah. can you talk about like a pipeline of yeah, sure. um, JSON to this, something <laughs> like that? <laughs> yeah, so in this case, I used a website, um, Sosalab. I can uh, write it mm -hmm. if you want. And uh, basically, it provides a list of nodes, so like all the persons. And it provides a matrix with uh, one if the two persons are connected and zero else. 
So this is the so-called adjacent symmetries, and it's another uh, way of um, viewing a graph. So you can have directly uh, a graph in a graph format, or it can also be just a matrix. So basically, you have a list of nodes and a matrix, and then uh, you can uh, easily, with iGraphs, tell, tell, OK, this is my list of IDs, and uh, this is my adjacent symmetrix. So boom, you have uh, the graph. If I may add just something, if we are thinking about a very big graph, uh, having the, ma the n by n matrix uh, with all the, 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 the links or the absence of links is typically not a good idea, because mm -hmm. typically uh, the graphs are quite uh, sparse. That is, uh, uh, a lot of the links are missing. And so a more efficient way of uh, representing the, the graph is just by, s by telling the list of all the, the links existing. And uh, typically for big uh, graphs, is, uh, it's the only way of, uh, of dealing with, uh, with the representation of a graph, ju just listing the, the couple of nodes that are, that are actually connected. Because otherwise, you are obtaining a very, very big matrix where 99.9% <laughs> percent of the of the elements are zero so it's not that useful okay other questions no okay uh, i'm curious does this work also on directed graphs what the direct what meaning can we give to the arrows when clustering well i mean th i mean uh, there is uh, there is a two-part answer, uh, that is, the first thing you can do when you have a directed graph is to look at it as, a, as an undirected one, uh, that is, just neglecting this information. This is the easy solution. Uh, on the other hand, if you really want to exploit this uh, information of the, of the, of the uh, direction of the links, that is the case uh, if you are analyzing Twitter, for instance, as a so social network. Uh, it is uh, not at all uh, undirected, so it's something you want to, to keep in your analysis. Uh, it's uh, more difficult. Typically, you have to split your problem into incoming and uh, outgoing links. And so you're going, for instance, to obtain two different uh, kind of communities that represents the communities of uh, incoming links and the communities of outgoing links. And then it's up to you, uh, really, to find a good uh, compromise between the two, so, so, to, so to understand something more about the structure of the graph. But it, there is no common solution. It's uh, it kind of an art to find the, the correct definition, so to be able and extract some useful information. And just a remark, um, so most of the community detection algorithm um, are doesn't support uh, directed graphs, in the case for the world trap, but you have uh, some algorithms that allow um, directed graphs, for instance, uh, InfoMap, InfoMap um, and um, yeah, there is some algorithm to find communities uh, with the directed links, but the meaning changes a bit. So thanks, Guy. Now we have a coffee break, and we come back half past four. So enjoy the coffee.